Now, I've been speaking to Andrew Coates, Professor of Physics at University College London, about the significance of this mission to the far side of the moon. Well, the far side of the moon, um, from previous missions, it looks like it's quite geologically different um, to the near side. Um, so the near side, uh, what you see on a, on a night when the, there's a full moon, uh, is a lot of sort of dark areas as well as light areas. And the dark areas are to do with previous volcanic eruptions, they're sort of lava plains, the mare. Um, on the far side, there doesn't seem to be that sort of um, thing. In fact, the, the terrain seems a lot lighter. And so scientists are interested to find out what the composition of that is, because it may be that um, uh, it's material which has been left over from some large collision um, and uh, ready to, to sort of look at the origin and history of the mood and that's why the, the far side is interesting and um, you know this this light material actually makes it uh, somewhat more interesting than uh, than some of the material on the on the um, sides which we can see all the time so it's an exciting um, prospect to be getting samples back for well, the international community hopefully um, uh, which will help to inform our knowledge of how the moon formed and how um, uh, what, what's the history of the moon um, and uh, overall give us more information about the moon and earth system. So what are the unanswered questions about the moon because we have had samples of the moon brought back to earth before but as you've explained not from the far side of the moon so what do we still not know about the moon? Well, there are a number of things about the formation of the moon. We know that there was, for example, a very large collision um, associated with the moon, which has caused a very large crater called the South Pole Lake in Basin, which is uh, where the mission actually is, um, you know, landed and uh, got some of the samples from, but on the far side. Um, so. This will help um, to understand more about the history of the, of the moon. Um, the samples which were brought pre previously from the Apollo missions and, uh, and also from the Russian missions and then also from, um, uh, from Chang'e 5, um, those are from the near side of the moon. So they're, you know, they're, of course, geologically interesting and they tell us lots of information about the, the moon. But the far side uh, is potentially going to tell us more about that collision history and what might have caused the collision and uh, whether material was brought up from underneath the surface of the moon, um, uh, which would, again, help to understand more about the moon's formation mechanism. So very, very exciting um, to be for the international community to be, to be awaiting those samples. And obviously, the samples will go to um, people in China first, and then we hope there'll be international collaboration with that afters, afterwards. So talk to me then. Uh, so obviously, the samples themselves are of great interest. Does this mission also give us important information about the potential implications of the ability to land on the far side of the moon, perhaps even set up a colony one day? Yeah, well, colony is, um, yes, of course, that's a very interesting idea for the future. And um, one thing about these, the southern pole area of the moon in particular, uh, and the North Pole for that matter, is that the craters, which we know there's water ice in those craters. So although um, the moon goes through this monthly cycle of course of being um, uh, of being full moon and then uh, it's, its various phases um, as it goes around um, as, it goes, as it goes around the earth and so it's very hot for a couple of weeks and then it's very cold for a couple of weeks and that means that the, the polar areas um, may have shaded or definitely has shaded areas of those craters which contain water ice and those those have been seen by previous missions for example the indian uh, chandrayaan mission um, which uh, which was able to find water evidence of water in those greater areas so very exciting result uh, and then this mission is is looking in more detail at that sort of thing so the, those polar areas the potentially water which could potentially be used um for um for future colonies and things like that missions like this are sort of helping not only with the sort of um big scientific questions of how the moon formed but also you know what is the role of water now on the moon and could that water potentially be used